Good evening. You're very welcome to our service of Evensong. Uh, a very warm welcome to Lily, who joins us for her first service as she begins a placement with us over the coming months. You're very welcome. There will be a retiring collection after this service, as there will be after all the services over the next two weeks, and it will be given through the Disasters Emergency Committee to try and help relieve some of the suffering of the Ukrainian people. As this is the first Sunday in Lent, we begin our service by singing hymn 121, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Service continues either on our card or on page 15 of our green prayer book. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. <coughs> let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much to the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, undone those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess thy faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter 
live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm with 176 verses. The theme is the Word of God, and the purpose of the psalm is to serve as a song and prayer of someone who delights in the law of God. Psalm 119, but we will sing verses 73 to 88, and can be found on page 284 of our prayer book.
first reading is taken from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends the first reading.
second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, uh, chapter 18, beginning at verse 9. Here is another parable that he told. It was aimed at those who were sure of their own goodness and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like the rest of mankind, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or for that matter, like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all that I get. But the other kept his distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat upon his breast, saying, God, have mercy on me, sinner that I am. It was this man, I tell you, and not the other, who went home acquitted of his sins. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Here ends the reading.
Tonight's parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector is a parable of contrasts. The tax collector is sincerely stressed about his life. The Pharisee is self-righteously superior. The tax collector paints himself as unholy and sinful, while the Pharisee proclaims that he is holier than everybody else. The Pharisee prays in a loud voice before the great altar so that everyone can hear his self-congratulations. The tax collector stands afar off, beating his breast in sorrow and repentance. In the greatest contrast of all, the tax collector was assured of God's acceptance and redemption, while the Pharisee remained distant from God, separated from God by his own pride and self-praise. Pharisees were a lay organisation within Judaism dedicated to keeping the law in every exact detail. They set themselves out to be model Jews. Pharisee also means separated one. And they kept themselves apart from ordinary people in case they might be defiled in some obscure way by contact with the unclean. And they were very much a holier-than-thou group of people who majored on religious debate and argument, but very much minored on actually living out the faith by caring for others. And while Pharisees loved the adulation of the people, tax collectors were an object of anger and hostility. They were the agents of the Roman Empire, and so were a constant reminder that Palestine was an occupied state, and there were many, many taxes. You could hardly move in first century Palestine without incurring some kind of tax. The tax collectors were regarded as corrupt. Their pay was what they could overcharge on tax, and some were very good at lining their own pockets. Now every day in the temple there were two services, two sacrifices to atone for the sins of the people. During each service there was a time of silence as the priest on duty went into the sanctuary to offer incense to God, and worshippers used that time for personal prayer. The usual posture for prayer was standing, arms crossed over the chest and eyes downcast. Prayers were spoken out loud. We get the impression of an overconfident and proud Pharisee, eyes looking up to the heavens, loudly proclaiming his virtues whereas the tax collector huddles in the background, eyes on the ground, muttering his apologies to God. He beats his breast, a sign of great distress and sadness. The Pharisee, in effect, God, how lucky you are to have me. The tax collector says, God, how lucky I am to have you. And there are three parts to prayer in Jesus' time. Confession of sin, thanks for God's bounty, petition for self and for others. And for all his knowledge and expertise in religious matters, the Pharisee's prayer included none of these. What has he to confess? Hasn't he been awarded as the just one? What does he care about others? The tax collector throws himself on the mercy of God. And what matters is not the high flow and language of the Pharisee's prayer, but the sincerity and genuineness of the tax collector's heart. The tax collector knew he was in debt to God, while the Pharisee wanted God to be in his debt. The opening verse of tonight's passage says that Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. The parable ends with the warning that it is the humble who will be exalted, while those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Lent is a time for self-examination into our own attitudes. What pride do we display? How do we separate ourselves from others? Lent is also a contrast. It can be all about us giving up things like chocolate and wine to help us. Or it can be a time for renewal and refreshment in our discipleship. Lent can be a time that we can grow in our faith 
therefore in our service of God and of others. On Ash Wednesday morning, I talked about the fact that there were two seas in Israel, the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea, both fed by the River Jordan. The Sea of Galilee teeming with fish because the water was fresh. The River of Jordan also flows out of the lake. On the other hand, the Dead Sea is full of sludge and cannot support life. Why? Because nothing flows out of the Dead Sea. And that can happen to us if we try to contain God's love just for ourselves and not let it flow from us to others. And that is to our neighbours, both near and far. So let us all take time each day to pray for the people of Ukraine that they may find Easter joy after these dark and terrible days. We are living in a time of great contrast. We look at the evil and cruelty of the Russian invasion into Ukraine, but then we look at the care and sacrifice made by the people of neighbouring countries and beyond. Let us use Lent to build ourselves up as disciples to serve God in our world. We have the Lent series starting tomorrow evening. There are still a few of the Church of England booklets in the porch. Whatever you do, this is a special time for our refreshment and our renewal. I end with one question. What does God require from us? Something the Pharisee would never have dreamt of asking. What does God require from us? A connection between our faith and our actions, between our care for those in need and our walk with God. From the words of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you and me but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God? Amen. We sing our next hymn, hymn 123, From Ashes to the Living Font. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for those days in the desert 
when through prayer and fasting Jesus discovered your will for his life and overcame the temptations around him. Help us during these days of Lent to come close to you and to listen to your voice. Give us strength to overcome the temptation to please ourselves and live without you. Teach us your ways that we may learn this Lent to be refreshed and renewed as your disciples. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, when we hear of devastation caused by war, we weep as you did over the city of Jerusalem, the waste and destruction, the sorrow and bereavement, fill us with sadness. We pray for peace, O Lord. We pray for all those who are living in fear and anxiety this night, for those whose lives have been torn apart. May your spirit bring comfort and strength. We pray for those in positions of responsibility. We pray for the Russian authorities, that they may see through these evil times and work to bring peace for all people. We pray for the leaders of the nations. May they work together, Lord, to bring peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for all those in the emergency services who respond to calls for help. We give thanks for those who organise the food banks, those who provide clothing and shelter for refugees, and for all who in any way take the love of Christ out of the church, into the communities to which we belong. We pray be with all aid agencies who are reaching out to the people of Ukraine, bringing assistance to neighbouring countries, providing a welcome and hope for all. Lord, in your mercy. Awaken, O God, your church throughout the world to see in the unrest of these times the cross of Christ as the one way to peace and let the living spirit of the Lord so move among Christians everywhere that righteousness will become victorious. Help us to work together with people of all faiths that we may bring a witness of your love and bring security and hope to all. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this church that has served the people of Formby through almost three centuries of war and peace, prosperity and poverty, and borne witness in this community the truths contained in Holy Scripture. As we see this year, help us to look forward with a sense of celebration. And help us also look to look for the future and discover new ways to commend the teaching of your love to the people for whom we serve. May this year be another foundation stone to reach forward into future generations that many more will find strength and hope in your love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our parish and today for those who live in Barkfield Avenue, the Copse and the Birches, may they be aware of your love. We pray for all who are ill, especially remembering Barbara, Francis, Jane, Janet and Judith, Kevin, Anne, Linda and Mike. For those in nursing homes and all who are awaiting treatment or results, or those in recovery. We pray for all who have been bereaved, praying for them strength and comfort. So we give thanks for the lives of Jim Adams, Cyril Goldborn, and Kevin Short. Lord, in your mercy. So we dedicate ourselves in you to you this night, O Lord. We take a moment in the quietness to bring our own prayers to you prayers of concern or thanksgiving, prayers for others or for ourselves. O Lord,
Lord, save us from all needless anxiety and help us to entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your wisdom. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stand and sing hymn 727, May the Mind of Christ My Saviour. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you this night and always. Amen.